Now to discuss the inclement weather, we're joined by UCT climate scientist Dr. Peter Johnston. Doctor, good afternoon and welcome to Full View. Good afternoon. No, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Now, Doctor, we've all seen those images of the very strong winds and storms that are wreaking havoc in parts of the country, but particularly in the Western Cape. They're quite worrying. Now, in a statement by the South African Weather Service, it stated that the inclement weather is due what is called a cutoff low. What is a cutoff low and what weather conditions precede it? So a cutoff low is a situation where a low pressure cell is cut off from the belt of low pressures. If you live in the Western Cape, you're well aware that the rainfall comes from cold frontal systems, which are at a certain latitude that we only get them in winter. And that's when the sun is, is moving to the northern hemisphere and all the pressure belts are shifting up. So this low pressure belt, <clears throat> around about 30 degrees south in winter, spins off little intense low pressure cells in the upper atmosphere. Now, in the upper atmosphere means sort of 10 kilometers to 15 kilometers up in the sky. This air is rising very, very fast. Now, sometimes it just sucks air in from around it at that altitude, but sometimes, and other times, when it's very, very strong, it starts to suck air in from the surface. Now, there's a high pressure cell <clears throat> between that cutoff low and the regular low pressure cells. So that's why we call it cut off. It's been sort of isolated and now it's gotten mm. to the other side of the high pressure. And what happens now is the high pressure feeds moist air from the sea into that, uh, that low pressure, which is now extended down to the surface. So what we've got is a lot of moist air being fed into a low pressure system, which is quite intense. Now, very often this cut off low just wanders around and is unpredictable and causes heavy rain, maybe thunderstorms. I mean, Landsberg flood was one, was one situation. But what happened there, it was in a very much an enclosed catchment area and all the rain went down one river and washed away Landsberg. Generally speaking, the rain is steady. It can be very high, but it's not violent. What's happened now is this high pressure cell, the isobars, which is the change of pressure over distance, have become very compressed and this leads to very, very high winds. And these high winds are fed into the cutter flow. So before the cutter flow even hit us, we had these very, very high winds, which didn't help with the fires that we had. We had those terrible fires before the rain actually arrived. Then the rain arrived and now we've got, we've still got very high winds and a cutoff low which is extending to the surface is very deep and very strong. This time we haven't had as much rainfall as other times. In the Heritage Day storm we had a lot of rainfall. This time we've only had 30, 40 millimeters but we've had very, very high winds mm -hmm. and those very high winds have caused the damage that you've seen. Mm -hmm. And what can we attribute to these like almost extreme weather patterns? Because other experts had stated that these conditions were actually fairly normal around autumn. And perhaps the frequency would increase as we're seeing, particularly in April. But many are still saying that the scenes are unusual. Are we not seeing more extreme weather conditions in the country of late, though? Yeah, that's a very debatable point. You've got to be very careful how you define an extreme condition. We've always had extreme weather. There have always been storms. There have always been floods. There have always been droughts. Cutoff lows are a regular feature three or four times a year. Sometimes they're in places that doesn't affect anybody, and then we don't read about them. So when it does affect Cape Town, and this one is very squarely over the Western Cape, came into the sort of came into the countryside around about. Um, Friedendahl uh, in the west coast and then moved across uh, the sort of Overberg, uh, the, sorry, the Winelands and the Overberg and is now moving down the south coast. And of course, it's a highly populated area. So we hear a lot about this and becomes very, very newsworthy. When these extreme events occur in places where people aren't living, we don't really hear about them. So it's quite tricky to say whether extreme events are, are increasing in frequency. But we do know that due to climate change, the atmosphere is getting more active. It's more energetic, if you like, and we're seeing more cases of heavier than normal rainfall and possibly stronger winds. Now, we cannot say that this event was due to climate change, but we can say that in the future, our climate and our weather are becoming more variable. But that is not saying that we're all going to die and climate change is going to kill us in the next couple of years. We do not know what to expect this winter. We may get regular frontal rainfall in the Western Cape. We may get one or two cutoff flows. The cutoff flows are likely to have heavier rainfall and possibly stronger winds than the regular frontal systems. But we know the frontal systems can be very violent. We can get very, very strong northwesterly winds blowing over the peninsula, damage in low-lying areas, flooding, 
uh, also in, in areas where people are too close to rivers or where in their areas that are low lying and and that weather can extend right into the country mm -hmm. so it's completely normal for this time of year for us to have the change from summer to winter uh, as we said before this is this is what's happening in the country the summer rainfall region rainfall is becoming less and less and the winter region rainfall is becoming more and more we just hope that we don't have excess rain whether it's in floods or whether we have too little rain in terms of droughts what we'd like is a sort of regular normal rainfall but that's very seldom happens we have as many drought years as we have wet years and mm -hmm. we really don't know what's going to happen but we have to be prepared mm -hmm. now it's quite comforting doctor that experts say we shouldn't panic because with just those visuals many of us were panicking and probably looking to attribute this to climate change but as you say that not necessarily in this particular instance but can you talk us through the impact of such weather on agriculture yeah, so remember that there's various different types of agriculture. Right now, we're going into the winter rainfall region. So the Western Cape, they're going to be planting wheat this month and next month. Uh, the fruit farmers are still harvesting. They, apple farmers must have had a torrid time because there's some uh, breeds of apples that are, or, or, or types of apples that are still on the trees and haven't been picked yet. And I'm wondering if any are still left on the trees. So that's an important thing that if you're about to harvest, then a wind like this, and well, the rain doesn't really bother it too much, but the wind like like this can cause severe damage. We've seen images of tunnels where they grow berries being blown away. The, uh, those sort of high value crops are very susceptible to high winds and high rains like we've been having. The wheat farmers on the other hand are quite happy. There's been some rain, it wets the soil and they're getting ready to plant. The wind doesn't affect them at all. Well, when I say at all, obviously it, it can blow some of their soil away, but most of them are practicing conservation agriculture and that's protecting the soil. When we go inland, we're seeing that maize particularly is about to be harvested. Well, it's drying at the moment and it's coming into harvest. Um, the wind can cause some lodging. The wind can cause some troubles there. A, a late rain um, in early winter can also cause some fungal diseases. So anything that's out of the normal where we're growing crops that are, are designed for a specific climate can cause some damage. The, the agricultural infrastructure is normally can withstand the kind of winds, the barns, the silos, things like that. Uh, machinery is usually kept out of the out of the storms and out of the wind, so that should be okay. But it is damage to to um, to crops, especially high value crops that are being harvested right now. Doctor, thank you very much for your insights this afternoon. That was Dr. Peter Justin, climate scientist at the University of Cape Town.